Hi guys, uh, this is Investing with JYK and today we'll discuss a little further um, on valuation. Um, yeah, so if you like the previous, uh, uh, if you haven't yet watched the previous valuation video and you're interested in uh, uh, how, interested about how to value a, a uh, security, then uh, I suggest you watch that one first and because this one will build on that previous video. So last time we looked at how uh, you, we looked at the bond with uh, some uh, face value, with a coupon and a maturity, and then how changing the expected return would mean that you should pay a different price for that bond. So let's change this up so that it is more similar to a stock. All right, so imagine that I have zero face value. Uh, right, so what does that mean? That means at the end of uh, the 10 years or whatever the maturity that is, um, there will be no payback. So imagine that's the case, right? And uh, because usually the way businesses die is they, well, usually they get bought out, but they also end up, you know, completely dead, dead, uh, be, with equity holders completely getting wiped out. So that's like the worst case. And let's change, uh, say the maturity is 100 years, or say 60 years. Uh, so that's like the um, about the extent of one's investment. I think if you invest for more than 60 years, you're probably dead. And, but if you're investing for your children or even your children's children, then that's a different story. And let's say they have some kind of, they're paying a dividend. right? So let's say it pays a 4% dividend. So... Um, in this case, it's a coupon, so it's let's say it pays four dollars every year, right? and then um, you can see the the net present value for these four dollars steadily decreases because of our ten percent expected return. So let's just make it, you know, go to sixty. Go, 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 where's my 60? It's here. That is so hopeless. Sorry. Ugh. It's actually harder than you think. Okay, so, uh, whoops, not yet there. 60 years, yay. All right, so the, uh, the nominal coupon is obviously going to be, jeez. Okay. Uh, what? Well, in this case, it's more like that. And just go down. Just go down there. All right, you can see at the end, it's like almost one cent. So you probably don't really care about that anymore. Um, and in this case, the sum is going to be, uh, you know, let's do C, let's just do CC. All right, sum is around $40. What does that mean? So if a dividend paying stock pays you $4 a year, and uh, you expect a 10% return, you should pay about $40 for the, uh, for, the, uh, for, the sh for the shares, which if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. If I get, if I pay $40 and I get $4 a year, that's exactly 10%, right? But we reach it from a different angle by looking at the net present value of um, all the future payments and discounting it 10% back. So 
this thing is quite interesting. So if you actually increase it further, you can come up with a with a, with a, a formula. So what I'm trying to do is avoid using these formulas um, as much as possible. The only thing we're using is we discount every year by 10% extra. Um, so you divide by 1.1 and 1.21 and 1. something right? every uh, every year. So the four divided by that. And so that's very nice. So that assumes this is more like a bond than a, a security, though, because this assumes that first of all the coupon never changes, and um, that at the end of it there is exactly a zero value, right? And uh, um, but. As time goes on, uh, if since there's no change, there's no expected return change. As time goes on, uh, every year, again, this security is going to be worth forty dollars for you. So you basically, um, you know, just hold it forever. You get your perpetual ten percent return, as this uh, expected return suggests, which is what it means. The expected return. Now let's think about a more realistic case, right? So usually these coupons, or in this case dividends, they increase uh, in value. Right? So if we repeat the 10%, right, so I'm just going to copy over here, um, and uh, face value is again zero because if we're just valuing the dividend, but Let's say the dividend increases by three percent a year. So, okay, so the increase I'm gonna put it uh, somewhere here, three percent a year. All right, so we copy all that for sixty years, and um, say that. Uh, this nominal should be really be F5. F5. Cool. The present value is G4, G10 divided by B1. Well, in this case, it's F1 times F10, F10, F10 to the power of F10. Yeah, so that is correct. And this is not GG. Okay, I know what the problem is. Move it over. One. Okay, yay. All right, so that. Since there's no change, we haven't made any changes yet. Um, the value of current value is the same. Let's try to put that three percent annual return there, right? So annual return increase, right? So um, times one point one plus this three percent to the power of the year. So we actually already got. Uh, Assuming like the next year will be three percent more, so we this year was four, and next year it's going to be three percent more, and we just repeat that. Oh, oh. F seven, F seven. Okay, so I have to make this thing absolute value e ten. E ten is this, so that's correct. F five, yeah. Okay, so you now see this is actually a lot more. So in 60 years, you will get 57.7. So this, looking at this, you can see the, the power of growth, right? So if you got a bond, bond will never pay you any more than the interest rate. If you got a stock, 3% is just the normal inflation. Uh, 2 to 3% is the inflation of uh, of the country. So if your dividend increases by just two, three percent, you can see the the effect I, the effect on the value. If you still expect ten percent return, is um, 
uh, quite a lot more. In this case, uh, you know, equals that divided by that minus one. So forty five percent extra. So never discount growth. And then if you think about this, you know, what if this thing is would be growing, you know, at ten percent. At ten percent, your net present value. Um, it's just going to be the same as the nominal value, and in this case, your your uh, current value is going to be much higher. So not uh, nominal value, but the first year's number, because it grows ten percent, but you also discount it for ten percent. So really, you're getting it um, for um, uh, you don't really discount it at all, in effect. And uh, you can see the nominal value actually increases crazily. The nominal payment, right? So that that's your dividend. So your dividend by year sixty is a thousand dollars. So this is some crazy growth. So never the ten percent growth is really good for a you know for dividend payments are actually really really good. Um, and you can see that the the current value is five times as much. So. Um, before we get into anything more complex, next time we'll discuss like perpetuity into perpetuity, in which case we'll have to introduce another formula. Uh, just looking at 60 years, you notice that there are, um, the, uh, let's say, the, the, first of all, growth makes a huge difference to how much you should be paying. Right? The other thing is, you know, let's go back to 3% and if you reduce the expected return so if you instead of 10% you expect only 6% return it has a huge effect again on the current value so you are you, you would be willing to pay 123% more compared to the 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 base case it was no growth and 10% return so these two values you can see is makes um, this number change a lot, or this number really, the current value change a lot. It's, this current value is very sensitive to those. So what we're doing um, in uh, academics is called uh, discounted cash flow, and we're doing some simplified version of it. And um, yeah, so if you so now we, we have the tools to val uh, value some things that are quite simple either they have no change in cash flow i.e. a bond um, or was just steadily increasing cash flow i.e. a steadily increasing uh, dividend paying stock and the uh, uh, the thing is um, uh, we are assuming we get no value out of the stock at the end of the 60 years, which isn't true, so we'll account for that in the next video. And also, um, there will be no fluctuations whatsoever, so we dis we you know ignore any potential risks. Okay, so yeah, so that would be today's video, and then if you have um, questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like, please click like, and if yeah, subscribe if you, if you haven't done so yet. Um, I think the next video we we'll probably do some. Um, I'll do another stock. Haven't um, made my made up my mind on what stock I will do yet. All right. Oh, yeah. So that we see you next time.